The first scarecrow appeared at the corner near my apartment. Well, the first scarecrow that was reported on, as best as I could find. I actually remember seeing it from my balcony when I was getting ready to head out in the morning. It had poured rain all night, but was finally slowing down as I was gearing up and I stepped out to get a feel on the weather. I barely noticed it at first, across from the 24-hour convenience, hung up on the pole for the streetcar stop. Soaked denim jeans hung to the grimy sidewalk. Above that was a mottled, mustard yellow sweater, one arm of which was fully unraveling. Both arms were spread wide open, tied to a plank behind it. Could have been confused for a person, if not for the head. It was a plastic, black garbage bag, tied at the neck and tucked into the shirt. Droplets of water kept their form on the smooth plastic and wrinkles alike, giving it an almost compound eye look. I stared at it from afar for some time, trying to figure out what it was doing there. This was mid-September, so it was too early for Halloween. But I thought, hey, the supermarkets are already stocking Christmas decorations. What constitutes too early? That was September 19th, to be specific. And that scarecrow didn't garner all that much attention. Some confused transit passengers, some photos popping up online, and then someone at some point took it down and threw it out, it's assumed. But it only escalated from there. And as I stare out into the snowstorm tonight, my hands are shaking as I try to imagine what's coming next. That's why I'm compiling this timeline of events. Maybe some things will start to make sense if I sort it out. Maybe there'll be a picture of why any of this is happening. September 28th, two more pop up. One a bit farther downtown under a bridge near the waterfront. The second hung up on a streetlight by a kid's park. The second was the first one to catch real public attention. Concerned parents were not happy with this creepy thing suddenly hanging there out of nowhere and the police were called. The police being involved also meant this was the first time we got official word on the insides of these grotesque figures. In their report, they simply stated it was filled with newspaper, food wrappers, and other assorted garbage. Nothing to be concerned about. A harmless prank. September 29th, only a day later, three more scarecrows, each in an entirely separate area of the city. Same basic description. People started developing theories about them, thinking they were a publicity stunt, an art installation, a threat. Nothing held much weight, though, especially since no one was taking credit for putting them together, or even more impressively, putting them up without being seen. For the next couple of weeks, things aren't too noticeable. More appear, but by this time, we were sort of used to them. October 13th, an ambulance was called to the first injury. At 11.15 p.m., a 24-year-old woman was out drinking with her friends when they came across a scarecrow strung up outside a McDonald's just a block from the bar. They crowded around to get a selfie with the figure, and the woman pretended to sit on its lap. She had said in an interview... We'd seen them around, and no one had ever, you know, had any issues with them. But when I leaned against it for a picture, I felt this sharp pain in my back, and, like, I, I freaked out. I got away from it, and my friends started freaking out, too, because, like, my back was covered in blood. I was so scared. The scarecrow was stuffed with large shards of glass, along with nails and dirt. The woman needed 12 stitches and a strong cocktail of preventative injections that I don't need to list here. October 14th, the police issue a statement stating that the culprit or culprits of these hazardous creations will be brought to justice. And of course that anyone with any information as to these matters needs to contact them immediately. This made it clear that this was no longer nothing to be concerned about. It also made it clear that the month between the first scarecrow and that point had given them no clues as to who was responsible. The police from then on responded to the area of just about every new scarecrow to cordon it off safely and take it apart. Scarecrows continue to appear more frequently every day. October 28th, an off-duty officer shattered his tibia and multiple bones in his right foot when he tried to take apart a scarecrow and found it full of cinder blocks. The force saw this as a direct response to their efforts to stop these events and, in effect, 
a direct attack. November 1st, another event I witnessed personally. I was out on a lunch break and I heard a woman screaming. I, along with a small group of people, ran to the noise and found her on her knees, screaming at 911 over the phone, it's holding a baby, it's one of those things, but it's holding a baby. I stayed with her, but saw a few people walk off down the street. I could see the shape strapped to the tree, a stained white plastic bag for a head, its arms not spread like the others, but identifiably holding something close to its chest. Shortly after, everyone was moved back as the police arrived, along with the paramedics. The woman continued to sob, but the ones who checked the situation out before the police told her that there was nothing but dead leaves and trash swaddled to the scarecrow. November 6th, several news sites began reporting used needles found in multiple scarecrows. I can't find any reports corroborating these claims, but it's possible they were found and done away with without involving the police, for whatever reason. I think it, it just may be faulty reporting, but worth mentioning at the very least to illuminate the frenzy we were moving towards. November 12th, flashing lights filled the night as fire engines wailed. The count ended up being approximately 22 scarecrows that inexplicably went up in flame at the same time across the city. No outstanding damage was done, but people started moving away by the hundreds. November 13th, the first snow hit, which only ramped up the frequency. The scarecrows started piling up in the gutters, on the roads, in the parks. I started working from home. They found a seven-year-old dead in the street. Nearby, there was a ratty old glove filled with pills. They looked like candy. November 16th, a friend of mine was out getting groceries when she stepped on a scarecrow buried in the snow. She described it as a squashing sound as she slipped and fell into whatever the half-frozen gunk was. She said it smelled like putrid juice, like the liquid that trickles from a garbage bag mixed with blood. She now has a skin infection on her face and hands. She's leaving in January. November 20th, disease started spreading in the lungs, in the stomach, in the blood. We didn't know the source, but we knew it was only happening to us here. Those who stayed here no longer felt safe. At that point, you couldn't go two blocks without seeing one, no matter how hard the police were trying to dispose of them. So people stopped leaving their homes. November 27th, four adult men went rogue, searching the streets for whoever is doing this. At 2.03 a.m., they called 911 to report they found a newly set-up scarecrow and were horrified with what they found. The reports warned against vigilante justice and said that they found nothing but the usual newspaper and garbage in the scarecrow. In contrast, I got in contact with one of the men who explained the following to me. Who had said, I don't care what the police found. I know what we saw and I still can smell it. There were organs in there. Wet, bloody human organs wrapped in all that trash. We watched them shrivel up and die in the body, so of course the police didn't find them. But they were there. December 1st, businesses have started shutting down. I got laid off. Don't know how I'm gonna afford my place. This isn't helping anything. I don't think there's any reason for this happening. I, I don't think anyone is doing this. But I can see outside my balcony, through the wind and sheets of snow, there's more of them. They weren't there when I first started recording. I could go look. I could see for myself. Peel that shiny black plastic away to reveal rotting teeth beneath. Watch the flesh decay and petrify and turn into detritus with my own eyes. And then maybe the cold will take me. And maybe there will be a new scarecrow left behind. Hi guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Big shout out to my patrons. Leaf Ninja, Roy Larimer, Mr. Creepypasta, Nicole Kister, Neon Scoundrel, William Dolphin, 
and so much heresy. If you want to become a patron, buy merch, or join my Discord server, be sure to check out the links in the description. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.